So let's get into what we might call the yin and yang of spiritual progress, you know, if there is such a thing, or we could call it the yin and yang of meditation, whatever. You've probably been doing these practices or you wouldn't be watching this. And you've been meditating and your anxiety has gone from maybe a six out of 10 years ago. And you've, and you've experienced this. It's, it's down to maybe a three and, that, and it feels good and it's peaceful. Or maybe you've focused on the gap between thoughts so every thought has a gap between it and the following thought. And if you focus your attention on this kind of spacious emptiness, it's a very peaceful thing. And it turns the mind down from sometimes six down to a three. And this is all nice and pleasant and peaceful. And then out of nowhere comes this dark night of the soul or anxiety, or you're yelling at the cat for no reason. And, and then you, you kind of, you're, you're stunned, you know, you don't even have words to put it. And you know you're you're outside of yourself. You're beside yourself, or something came over you. And um, so, in this video, I want to explain a little bit of why these things happen. And to begin, we have to understand that the mind is a biological mechanism. The thinking mind is part of our meat suit. It's part of our physiology, and it goes back. It goes back really millions and millions of years. And uh, I'm going to quote Antonio Damasio very well-known neuroscientist, and he said, I'm paraphrasing, but it was something like this, that without homeostasis, life would not be possible. So homeostasis is part of every meat suit. It's part of every biological organism. Uh, and you know what this balancing act is all about. Just to give you an example, you might, uh, maybe you're out running and your body temperature goes up, so you start to sweat and that cools it down. So that's the balancing act. Or you're too cold, so your body temperature goes down, and then you start to shiver, and that brings your body temperature up. And all these things are absolutely automatic. You're not even doing any of it, or even thinking. Sometimes you don't even know you're doing it. So the mind is part of this biology. That's why we have things like the sympathetic, and the, which kind of wakes you up and excites you, arouses you, and then the parasympathetic, which brings you back down and calms you down. And the two nervous systems are always working together to do this homeostatic balancing act. Well, the same is true with the mind. And this is why I talk about, you know, if I say, don't think of the number 13, and you put your energy into trying not to think, then you, the mind balances this out. And all you do is end up thinking the number 13. The same thing happens with meditation. Once you've turned the mind down to a three, the mind can reestablish itself. The mind is trying to bring back balance, is trying to reassert itself, and it will do, do so through its most basic mechanisms, fear and anxiety, frustration, all the negative emotions. And so you may have gone to a three, then all of a sudden you go to a nine out of 10 in terms of anxiety, and it could be very uh, bewildering and, and, and unsettling. Well, what's happening is just part of the process. And so um, this is also reflected in some of the psychedelic research. So we know that uh, psychedelics have a profound effect on the parts of the brain very closely associated with overthinking the default mode network. So what happens with, the, with psychedelics? Well, research seems to show that most people have a very positive experience of it, but there's always the potential for this bad trip. This, you know, someone just freaks out. And that's, again, part of this process of the, you turn down the mind from a six to a three, it comes back with you know, vengeance, one might say. And so, um, you know, so how do you deal with this? I like to think of this whole uh, game, you know, kind of like a video game in the sense that maybe you've, you, so you've gone from a six to a three. Well, that's like level one of the video game. Now the mind has reestablished itself. It's coming back to dominate again. And you're just, you've entered level two of the video game. And so um, the real trick is when you, when you, the trick of Wu Wei, when you, when you realize that all effort is, anytime you try to push the mind around, which is just the mind pushing itself around, you're going to have an opposite reaction. Um, and sometimes the opposite reaction may even be in greater force than the, most of the time it's in greater force than, than the initial effort to try to bring that balance back. And so, um, okay, now you're on level two. Well, you start over again and you, you, you 
you recognize that you know it's a it's a great hint that it's the mind pushing the mind around that results in this homeostasis because that it, you're still playing with the biological part of the game and um sometimes when, when that alone is enough to realize uh how to you know win in a way in a sense by not playing at all